fill this room.
the valley low Oh, oh, that is who you are You're faithful to every generation You don't change who you are Oh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Oh, ancient of days Oh, you don't change You never change is who you are, Lord. That's not just who you are in this song, Lord. That is who you are in my life, God. Part the waters that surround us, Lord, and let us see you. Yeah. 
here. Let the church, come on. Let the church lead that. Come on, how great.
let it flow. you, but just let it flow. hymns coming up from you from your childhood. Right now those old songs that you thought didn't matter but they're beautiful to the ears of the Father. You know the one. You know the one. 
Oh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God.
lift your name on high, Jesus. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all the provision this week, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the hedge of protection you placed around each one of us, Jesus. We thank you that you meet us right where we are, where we are Jesus. And from the future, you call us into the future, Jesus. Lord, we're so thankful. seated as we uh, transition into our uh, prayer and testimony time. We, um, as Lee mentioned before, we have, uh, <clears throat> we had an opportunity to, to go up to a global awakening, uh, Voice of the Apostles, over, um, over this last week, and uh, we had an amazing time. Um, I would encourage you to, you know, we partner with Global Awakening in many different areas, and so, you know, when they have um, when they have events, I would encourage you to set aside and go to one of these events. It's it's it'll it'll change your life, that's for sure. It, it'll it'll flat change your life, and so um, we wanted to uh, give opportunity tonight um, for testimony. Uh, and so um, I think Alex will start with you. Why don't you come up here and uh, and give us a testimony of what you felt like the Lord uh, spoke to you and and your experience at the uh, at the Voice of the Apostles. Come right up here on stage. I won't play a mic, so here I'll just hold it. <laughs> so um, Voice of the Apostles was definitely an experience. Um, a couple things that I learned off the bat is that Corley's cashews are famous. Um, <laughs> Pastor Lee has great hair. <laughs> That's Feld's problem, I think. <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, um, I got to see, um, the power of God on display um, unlike I, I've seen it before, and, and it was overwhelming when I first got there, um, seeing the power of God on display, but, you know, throughout the whole process there, he spoke to me, and there was kind of an underlying message of going out and, and, and serving the kingdom, um, and Thursday was actually my two-year sobriety date, and, and, And I was able to take a look and examine the point where, um, and, and the work that God has done in my life, and and me having to partner with God in that. Um, I look back and I see what I was without God, and I'm seeing God's power on display, and I'm seeing that this is a, a king mm. that I serve now. Um, I don't serve... Um, weakness anymore, but I serve strength and power. Um, and it's good to be a servant to that. Um, and this one lady said something in the middle of everything, um, kind of like what just happened to us right now where we were silent and it was going on with 2,000 people and she spoke out in the middle of it and she said, that he's blessed you to be a blessing. Mm. And that resonated with me the most. Um, that my life, this, this whole trip was a process of reminding me that my life is no longer my own. And that I serve a powerful king. Um, and I have joy in my heart today because of it. 
Amen. Amen. So, um, Ms. Shanna, come up and tell us what your experience was. You've, I mean, you've kind of got a, been in, um, what is this, your third voice of the apostles? Or the fourth voice, voice of the apostles? Yeah, I'm in the middle. I'm going to let you hold it. Oh, great. All right. Just kidding. <laughs> so, um, you never tell God what you don't want him to do, because that's probably what it's going to do. Um, so, I started out this whole... This was a very different voice of the OA for me, um, which is voice of the apostles. Um, there's been a shift in my life, a huge shift, and it was very evident in this um, in this time. Um, anyway, um, so the whole time, you know, the Lord is speaking, like, whenever they're, they, every speaker, like, is speaking your language, you know? You're like, wow, Lord, you really do speak to me, and I'm really not crazy. So, the, like, one of the first things I said um, to the guys, I said, um, you know, I really don't want that thing where you feel like you got kicked in the gut. That's what I didn't want the Lord to do. Because, um, like, you hear it all over the room. It's like, all of a sudden, it's perfectly quiet, and all of a sudden, you hear, ho, oh! right? You hear that. And you're like, mm, they just got something. So anyway, so <laughs> oh my goodness. So I started. I'm just gonna be really honest. I started off the meeting, and I was like, I want to get prayed for. Then, then you know, like you have the speakers that you want to pray for you. Just saying, it's just the way it is. I'm like, I want some impartation. I've been imparted to so many times, and so I'm sitting there, and um. The Lord checked me. Like, our God is a God of love, but sometimes that includes checking us. And I was getting frustrated, and all of these things were happening. And, of course, the Lord's dealing with me, and I'm doing my thing, you know. And then the day that Heidi Baker spoke, which she's amazing, by the way. Heidi Baker spoke, this sweet little thing. She talked about clay pots. <laughs> and I was reminded that we, we, are, we have tr these treasures in jars of clay. And the Lord told me, he's like, I made you a clay pot so that you can sit with other clay pots. And you can bring out the treasure that's in them. And I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, uh, Lord. Like, just a feel in some kind of way, and just, like, I've been asking for the fire of God, and it's fun and all, but listen, there's a refining that we, like, listen, refining repentance. Mm. So that night, Heidi dismissed everybody, and she says, listen, um, if you need to go, go, because, of course, at the VOA, if you have kids, you have to get them at 10 and blah, 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 10 o'clock at night. But then she invited us just to stay in worship for an hour. And I love her because she carries a pillow everywhere she goes. Because in case the Lord keeps you there for five hours, you're prepared, right? So, hey, brother, we need a pillow, right? <laughs> so, anyway, so I know I'm going too long. I'm so sorry. But so that night, my stomach still hurts so bad. I just begin to weep about pride and all these things. God. And I shook. Like, I would just lay there and I would just shake under the power of God. And it was just, like, in my whole being, I, it would just, I did a bunch of crunches on the floor, face down. I don't even know if that's possible, but it happened. And, like, I wrestled with God in that moment, in that hour. And, like, I'm, like, I danced so much, I worshiped so much, I kneeled so much that I literally, like, I, my legs hurt, right? And so I'm, I'm, like, I wrestled with God, and I don't care that I'm limping, because I wrestled with him. And he reminded me of the name, and, and it was just beautiful. So I just, like, don't be scared of all that, because 
refining is beautiful because that's where the gold comes from, right? And, and be quick to listen and slow to speak because you might not like what happens when you speak sometimes. So that's what I got. <laughs> I got wrecked. He did everything I didn't want. I, I, did, I did want it. I just didn't want it like that. I just thank God I wasn't like yelling, right? It was in the dark in a beautiful place on the floor. Um, but I left out of that place and I was shaking all over. But it was beautiful. And, and like I didn't go for the experience and the encounter. I did it just because I love him and I really want to be like him. So that's it. Sorry I went over. But there you go. Praise the Lord. His presence is here. Feel his presence. So, um, we, as Pastor Rick has already shared with you, we, we had the privilege of going to Virginia again for the Voice of the Apostles. Um, we got to see Brandon a few times, got to go to dinner with him. Um, one evening he was busy working and ministering and praying and catching and doing all the things that global students do. Um, and so we're very grateful that we were able to send him. Uh, we're very grateful that we were able to send him. You know, it's one of those things where it's really sweet to see what God is doing, but it's also really bitter when they leave um, the holes that are left. But the beautiful thing about when you send sons and daughters from your home and you send them out and um, it makes room for other sons and daughters. And um, and so we're we're really thrilled for his life and what he's doing. He's He's somewhat of a global school celebrity. Um, everywhere I went, when people that I knew over the last month and a half connected Brandon to me, they were all like, wow, you know, everybody's talking about him. Uh, so it's just neat to see him really prospering there. Um, we're really proud of him. Um, and so um, who knows, we may even see him before the year's out. We'll see. Um, you know, we go to these conferences, and this is the fourth time I've been to a Voice of the Apostles. I've been to a couple other conferences with Global over the last five years. Um, been to Brazil and Puerto Rico with them. You know, and there's a couple of reasons why you do it um, and why we do it. Um, it's to, one of them is to connect with like-minded people. To realize that your family, your kingdom family, isn't just the, your immediate kingdom family. I want you to realize that the, the body of Christ is much bigger than what we view it as for, in our own little perspective. And, you know, as a church, we've, we've been involved with Global now for five years. We've been part of the network and partners for several years. Um, and you realize it, and what that means is that this church is part of the network. We have submitted ourselves to their covering, um, but we also partner with Global Financially. And so every dollar that is funneled through us, that gets funneled to that place, we've, we, we're, we're involved with many people financially, um, but... Every dollar that comes through this ministry, not only the dollars, but the practical ministry, we are part of a greater collective of the work that God is doing around the world. You know, every, every year come, I don't know, uh, March or something, I'll get an email asking how many countries we visited, how many people were saved, how many people received healing, how many people were de uh, delivered from demons and deep emotional issues. Uh, we'll, we're asked, we're, and we fill out a survey, and all the other members of the network, and it's just under 500 members of this network, 
uh, submit all of this information every year, and we're all part of the collective. And so I, I want you to know that um, the seeds that we sow are quite amazing. Uh, Alex, can you just put that little slide up for me, please? So this is the collective of 2020. 66,436 people were saved. Fifty four thousand four hundred and sixty two healings, and twenty thousand eight hundred and forty people were delivered of demons. And that's just through what the records were kept. And so, in saying that, you need to know that you're part of something bigger than what you think you are. You're bigger than something than you think you are. And this was in 2020, the year of the great deception. Seriously, the year where churches shut their doors for months. This is the year that people stop traveling around the world. This is the year that most of the people in the network were probably a half active. And this is the fruit. And only greater things are going to come. But you know, we go to these conferences and um, they're fun. They're exhausting. I was sharing with somebody earlier that, you know, we, we arrive at the conference center, at the church or wherever it happens to be, um, around 8.15 in the morning. Um, and the first session starts at 9. And some nights we didn't leave till 11.30, close to midnight. And it's uncomfortable. Um, you know, it's weird because all you do is eat feels like. Um, I haven't eaten at all today because I've eaten enough. Um, I'm not really fasting. I'm just not hungry. Um, I stored it up. Um, and we get to hear from many voices that are part of the same family and hear different perspectives. And one of the things I was really encouraged by, um, let me back up, but we don't go there just to have a good experience. You know, this isn't like a trade show where we're going to learn the greatest and latest trends to do things. It's not like it's some sort of church growth conference where everybody goes and, and some mega church pastor from some Bible Belt city is telling every small church pastor in the world that everything they're doing sucks and that if you do it like them you'll grow your church to 40,000 people in three weeks who cares who cares because this is this is my perspective is I'm not really that interested in in having every program that is available to meet what you perceive your needs are um, I just want to make a place where Jesus is and in these meetings, this is where he is. And we go to them because when Chan and I first went to one in 2016 of VOA, everything changed for us. And when I mean us, I mean us. Um, everything changed. And there's been such an overflow. I mean, I think about um, all so many healings and people being delivered and 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 people getting their lives, and the culture, the culture has shifted, and so many things, and you know, and how it overflows into your lives, and you know, like Clarice Mittler, she went to Brazil, never prayed for a person in her life, we prayed for her as she went, and I said, Lord, the first person she prays for is going to get their sight back, and isn't that what happened? A totally blind person left out of there completely seeing. First person she ever laid hands on. And that's why we do this. 
And we went the first time not knowing what we were going for. I just had this real deep hunger in me, and I didn't even know who any of the people were. And I just had this real deep hunger in me. And it was satisfied, but it was satisfied not with, not with being full, but satisfied with more hunger. And so, in a moment, I'm, I'm going to share a little bit, not too much tonight, but in a moment, we're going to spend some time praying. Um, I say not too much, but famous last words. Um, we're going to spend some time praying because I feel like the Lord wants to release something here tonight. So, one of the things I was super encouraged by is you know, I, I was telling Nikki today, I'm just a little voice in a little place with a little group of people that the Lord has entrusted me with that I love very much, and I want to share week to week what's on my heart, and um, today I was talking with Paul Childress a little bit via text message, and, and he's been following our messages, and, and he was talking with me about it, and you know, I was sharing with them that I just feel this increase in preaching prophetically, not teaching, but just preaching prophetically what the Lord's saying, just say it. And, and I, you know, and, and I said, I don't know if I'm doing it right or not, but the Lord will sort the mess out if I'm screwing stuff up. And, um, but there was some voices there that are much larger voices with much larger platforms and opportunities. Um, and the things that they were saying are the exact things that I've been saying. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to pat myself. I'm, trying, I'm, I'm saying that because I want you to understand that the Lord is speaking directly to you through us what's going on in the kingdom family at a greater scale. Mark Sharona must have said, uh, Mark Sharona, um, Bishop Mark Sharona out of Orlando, he has a, 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 an amazing ministry. He must have said 50 times that you have to pay attention to the signs of the times. Must have said it 50 times. Talking about the sons of Issachar, talking about all the stuff that I've been ta- telling you all about. And, then I, and I haven't really been talking about this too much here, but a few weeks ago I shared at the farm on a Sunday you know, about how John would refer to himself as the d- disciple that Jesus belo- was his beloved disciple and the one that he loved. And I pointed out the fact that John wasn't writing that from his perspective as the one following Jesus around. He was writing that from the perspective of the one who followed Jesus around, but 60 years later he wrote his story. It probably took him 60 years to come to the realization that he could call himself the beloved disciple. And he, and Sharona was referring to the fact that not only is John the beloved disciple, but so are we. I mean, it was crazy. It's, I'm pretty sure he's been watching my videos. Well, he should. Paul Childress does go to his church weekly. And so, the Lord is saying something. The Lord is saying something. And as part of what he's saying, is he, and I was reminded that the word that we're standing on, that we're stepping into, and we are in this season of the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen for the kingdom, we're in that moment. We're in that moment. The world is getting smaller. The, the fastest growing church in the world right now is in the nation of Iran. And the reason I know that we're in the moment is because the world is on fire. The world is on fire. Um, I'm going to share some things. I'm going to share some things, and they're going to be somewhat disturbing. And I hope you're disturbed. Because I was disturbed. And I was disturbed to a point to where I realized enough is enough. So, 
so many of you um, have heard of a, of a missionary lady named Heidi Baker. Her style of ministry is very weird. She lays on the floor and she just... <laughs> very weird. She really brings a pillow with her everywhere she goes. Because in the middle of ministering, if she says, okay, it's time to soak for an hour, she lays on her face and it's one of those travel pillows and she lays on it. She's prepared at any time to soak. That's just another word for me for napping. But she shared something and then, you know, we have this little time of testimonies here. In, in northern Mozambique right now, where... Iris has started, her ministry Iris started, and it's, it's gone global. But northern Mozambique right now is in the midst of an incredible civil war. And the news isn't covering it. And I promise in a minute I'm going to share some scripture. Make this meeting legal. But you need to hear this. And she says they were on a Sunday morning and it came time for testimony time. And I mean, she's just a little lady. She's like this, blonde hair, living in an entirely black nation, sticking out like a human highlighter. And they're in the Sunday morning and it came testimony time and this lady stood up to give testimony. And this is the lady's testimony. Kind of like what we do. And the lady says, so before I came here, I was going to eat my family. But now I'm not. There's an entire nation under siege where there is such a battle between dark and light. And dark, the darkness is trying to push itself forward through violence, killing, power, control, and dominance. And the light of the world is loving one person at a time. A woman who said, I was going to eat my family before going into this service, encounters the Lord, and her testimony is, now I'm not. And then there's another guy that's part of Iris that was part of Global Awakening for a long time. In fact, I think he was Randy Clark's first intern, the guy named Will Hart. How many of you have heard of Will Hart? Yeah, okay. So he's no longer with Global, but he's the chief operating officer of IRIS. And he was telling a story about the last time he went to Mozambique just a few weeks ago. Because IRIS is global now. And Heidi had him sit down and they had lunch with a few pastors that are part of their ministry there. And Heidi asked him to tell the story, their stories. And one of the pastors said, the, the soldiers, whoever they are, I don't, I'm not sure who they are, um, came into our village, and my four-year-old wasn't fast enough. They captured him. They killed him. They cut him up and ate the choicest parts of his body. Another one told stories of child soldiers shooting up his entire family and village. Another woman that they ministered to, this is not one of the pastors, but a woman that they ministered to, tells a story of how her husband was killed. They cut his head off, boiled it, and told her, if you don't eat his brains, we are going to kill you in a more horrific way than we killed him. And after Will heard the graphic tales of these stories, left the room and threw up, but he could not handle it. 
he went back in and he began to ask them to pray for him because they, didn't, they had faith that he didn't. And as he began to ask them how long they've been in the Lord and how long they've been serving, most of them had been Christians for like six years or less. And then the next thing they did is they just began to worship because they realized that God's goodness was greater than the despair of their life. When you have a nation at war with itself, and one of the ways they're dealing with it is they're literally eating one another. There are markets. They have meat markets with human body parts. I know this is graphic, and I know this is disturbing, but we need to understand that the people that in Mozambique, they are our brothers and sisters. And these are the signs of the time. Where's the, where's the cry of the injustice? Where is it? Where is the world stage? Where is it? Where is the UN? Where is the church? These are the signs of the time. Where brothers will be turned against brothers and mothers against daughters and daughter and mother-in-laws against daughter-in-laws and fathers against sons. These are the signs of the time. This is what we need to understand is happening. But we as the church, we must remember that it is our responsibility to keep our lamps full so that we're prepared. We must be prepared. We're not we have not been positioned in Mozambique to deal with Mozambique's issues. You understand that? My heart is broken. Like, I'm going to be communicating in the next couple weeks with Iris to see what we can do to be involved. But we can't go there. We're positioned here. And our lamps have to be full and prepared for what's going on here because God is calling us to make a harvest here in this region and in this state and in this sub-region and in the area that God has called us to function in. This is where we must begin to understand that our lamps must be full so that we can be ready for when the king comes back. Not to escape, but to join him. The signs of the time are, I mean, look at what's going on. What, what is going on in these nations? And we have Afghanistan is in complete chaos. There's wars. The Taliban has, the, the nation has been turned over to the Taliban. And, and the, the Christians are being put in places where they can't eat. And they can't, and they can't buy food. And they can't do commerce. And they can't do these things by this, by this horrific, demonic, governing body, the Taliban. And Right now, in parts of Afghanistan, I was reading an email I got yesterday from Robbie Dawkins. There are, there are um, sympathetic Muslims that are actually helping the persecuted church in Afghanistan. They're taking their property, they're seizing it. But you know that Afghanistan was one of the fastest growing churches in the world. Listen, what do you think is motivating people to be so eager to abort the unborn. The same principality. What do you think is motivating the feminist movement that says that we must not only be equal, but we must be superior? The ideology that says now that if I consider myself oppressed, now I have to oppress my perceived oppressor, that's demonic. What do you think is motivating these things? And how do we deal with it? We deal with it by loving our neighbor with the gospel of the kingdom 
as we love ourselves with the gospel of the kingdom. But the church, we have to be taught. We have to be trained. We have to be equipped. We have to be released. Because the problem is, is Bible studies don't teach you how to do this. Will you position yourself to love your neighbor as Christ loved you? Did he set you free from your bondage? Did he deliver you from your sin? Did he heal your body? Did he take you from being a dead in your sin to alive in him? Everything he tells us to do, he's already done for me. And in John 13, he reads, and he had gone out, and Jesus says, Now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself. Listen, little children, There he goes. He's calling for his mom, but he's running away from her. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me just as I said to the Jews. And now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. But before he, before he leaves, listen. Listen. He's telling them, I'm leaving, you can't come, but I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you how to be. A new commandment I give you. This is not a new suggestion. It's not a new idea. It's a command. That you love one another just as I loved you. Now think about it. Did he deliver you? Did he heal you? Did he raise you from the dead? Did he take your sin of of that you became so unaware that was even in your life, and did he heal you from it? Because you understand that's how leprosy works, right? Leprosy works in such a way that your skin, it's very painful at first, but after a period of time, you no longer have the ability to feel the pain. I'm not trying to spiritualize it, but this is the reality. This is what our sin does. We're so accustomed to the sin in our lives that it no longer causes pain. Did he deliver you from that? Listen, there's a lot of distractions in here right now. I'm not calling anybody out, but there's a lot of distractions, and it's because the Lord's about to move. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know. Look at this. By this. By what? By the fact that you love one another the way that he loved you. How did he love you? He healed you. He cleansed you of your leprosy. He raised you from the dead and he delivered you from the demonic influence in your life. When you do those things, when you walk in those things, when you love people just like he loved us, when you are the perfect love of the Father that cast out all fear, by this people will know that we are his disciples. If you love one another. And so when I heard some of the stories that I heard this week, I was mortified. And I have a pretty strong poker face, and so I'm able to listen to these things and not express the way I feel, but I did not feel good. I think it's all the years of listening to people in inner healing tell me their deepest, darkest secrets and me having to act like they don't, are not shocking to me. But then I hear the story of how they deal with it. And they go into the streets and they just sit with the one. They just sit with the one. The one widow. The one orphan. They love the one. Muslim, Christian, they don't care. They love the one. And so I believe that the Lord 
wants to release something in us tonight. I believe that the Lord wants to release something. I have this tendency where I look at the dysfunction. Because it's like in your face. I look at the dysfunction and I think to myself, how did we get here? And then I realize we got here because we haven't done the things that we were supposed to do, which is love our neighbors as ourselves. Love, love others the way Jesus loved us. This is how we've gotten here. And I begin to look at it, and I begin to get frustrated, and I realize all I have to do is release the image of God to one. You, in order to partner with God's plan, is to release it to one. But you know what it says, love one another. Love one, then another. Love one, then another. Love one, then another. And, and the reality is, is if you've received deliverance and you've received healing and you've received purpose and you've received the kingdom of heaven being unleashed in your life and, and, and you, you should be so excited about that happening that you should be dragging people around by their head like a caveman dragging a woman to the place where they're going to find it. But the reality is we don't do it because we don't want to love anybody. I don't want to invite anybody to church because, you know, it's Saturday night and they got this going on and they got that going on. Forget it. They're dying. They're demonized. They're going to hell. They have no purpose. They have no vision. They don't know what love is. They're living dysfunctional and you're the one that can bring the function of the kingdom into their life. You can do it in the church, you can do it at the coffee shop, you can do it in the grocery store, you can do it in your workplace, and here's the deal, if your boss fires you because you're releasing the kingdom, pray a double blessing over him. The Lord's going to give you a better job anyways. Or he's not. Because maybe he wants you to be a nomad. Whatever. Because it's better. Obedience is better. Obedience is better, and, I, and I'm, to this place, I'm to this place where I know it sounds like I'm really frustrated, but I'm not, um, but I am, but I'm not, that we pursue comfort over kingdom all the time. And the comfort, there really is no comfort, although the Holy Spirit is our comforter, He's comforting us because he's, we're called to go into places that are chaotic. You realize that the lives of the people that are around you are chaotic? Even church people, because they put on this plastic face to make everything look good, but their lives are a mess? And so I believe that the Lord wants to release this, this thing that if, if he's love. And the Bible says that I am, he is in the Father, and he is in me, and I am in him. And so therefore, if he's love, I'm love. If he's perfect love, I'm perfect love. If I'm perfect love, I can change the atmosphere from fear to love just like he can. Because I'm created in his image. And when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm actually releasing the kingdom of heaven into people's lives because in him there is no fear. In him, there is no hate. In him, there is no dysfunction. So even in my broken areas, and even in my brokenness where I have dysfunctions in my life, when I release him, the, what I release is not dysfunctional. I release function. I release the image of the one who created me to bear his image. And so what I want to do is I want to pray. Um, and... Penny's going to bring the kids in here in a minute because I want to pray for them too. Um, I'm glad they didn't hear the beginning of that. Um, if you'll stand.
close your eyes, please. You know, in John 14, Jesus says to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. He will be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will, not, and he will be in you. And then Jesus goes on to say, I will not leave you as orphans. Yet a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live and you also live. We have been made alive We have been made alive to reveal the glory of the King of Kings in whom we've been created in His image. I want you to close your eyes. Put your hands out in front of you. Children, I want you to do this. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to put your hands out in front of you. And I just want you to focus on the Lord. Holy Spirit, just begin to reveal your love to us. Father, reveal your love to us. Jesus, reveal your love to us. You hear that? You hear that little cry? Da da. In your heart, just begin to say that to him, like a little child, like a two-year-old. You don't come to him like a little child. You won't see the kingdom. Begin to have awe, have awe and wonder in your heart. Because here's the thing. We've been talking about the signs of the time. And here's, and here's the reality. A sign points and gives direction. And the direction that the Lord is giving in this sign of the time is that the world that we live in has such a deficit of the love of the Father that it is looking for every opportunity to be connected to something and He is drawing it. He is drawing the people of the world. He's drawing us. And now you, us, we are the signs of the time. We are the signs of the kingdom. Called to love lavishly to reveal his goodness. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And children, I want you to pay, especially you children, especially everybody, because we're all children, but children, I'm giving you instructions to really pay attention. Because I'm going to pray, and the Lord is going to pour himself on you. Because your generation, whether you be two years old or 14 or 15 years old, you are, you are shifting generations. You are called to shift generations. And the foolishness that is being poured down the throat of your generation is not going to, is not going to cause you to be fools. I, I declare today that the children of this body are going to be countercultural. But counterculture in such a way that they will love those in the culture in such a way that, the, that they will be drawn to the image of the image maker. Holy Spirit, come. Love of God, just fill this place. Holy Spirit, come. Love of God, fill this place. Holy Spirit, come. Love of God, fill this place. Holy Spirit, begin to touch the lives of the people in the room.
And many of you are beginning to experience a manifestation of the Father's love. You're feeling a shift. You're feeling a shift in your body. You're feeling a shift in your heart. Where the love of the Father is washing over you. So I've shared with you guys, I just want you to keep your eyes closed and, and think about what I'm saying. I shared with you recently in the past about this movie with the boat that goes behind the enemy line and rescues the girl and da da da. I just, the Lord just said this to me. He says that for many of you, when you go into your workplace, you go into your job, you go into your events and things you do throughout your life, that when, when you are touching the lives, that is you stepping behind the enemy lines. But I want you to hear me now. Some of us, and, I'm, and, and the Lord is saying this to me, but there's others in the room that qualify for this. Some of us have been called to live behind the enemy lines. Do not... Do not think that you have been placed in a place with no, with no purpose because there's things going on around you. But you have been placed behind the enemy lines because you are the one, you are the one that can pull them out of the line of fire into safety. You have been placed behind the enemy's lines Some of you, some of you at one time were the enemy. And, and I forget the story, but there's a story in the Old Testament where there were Jews that were fighting for the enemies of Israel. And at one point they turned and they took their armor off of the enemy nation and put back on the armor of Israel. This is what some, and, but you get to stay behind the enemy's line and snatch people from the, from the pits and the fire. Love of God, fill this place. Some of you are beginning to feel His love through heat, through cold, through peace, through electricity, through power. Children, listen to me. Keep your eyes closed, but listen. If you are feeling anything in your body, if your hands are getting warm, if you're feeling any heat on your body where earlier you felt one way, but all of a sudden you're like getting hot, do you feel this pressure on you like, like uh, somebody put a weight on you, like a heavy jacket? That's the Lord touching you, and he wants to touch you more. Don't, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. And so if you're experiencing any of these things, if you're experiencing any of these things, what I want to do is I want to invite you and, and children, I want you to come to the very front if the Lord is touching you. But, and then adults, I want you to be behind the children. And then if I could have some people, um, if need be, to, to catch. But I want you to come. And the Lord is going to do such a filling of his love. I just really feel that's the, that's the issue. We need to be filled with the love of the image maker that he has for the image bearer. The image maker has such a love for his image bearers so that we can be commissioned to bear his image through loving others. Come now. Come now. If you're experiencing a shift, come now. Don't be shy. Come now. Children, come. Come. Parents of children, if your children are coming, come and stand behind them. 
All the way to the front, right here. All the way to the front. Back up just a little bit. Keep your eyes closed and your hands in front of you. Adults, if the Lord is moving, just come so I know who you are, that you're just not standing and observing. Come. Come. If I could get a couple helpers, please. I want you to listen to me. Keep your eyes closed, but listen to me. I'm going to pray that the fire of God, which is a good thing, okay? The fire of God comes on you and fills you up with his love. And here's what the Lord's going to do for some of you is you're just going to feel so much peace in your heart. But some of you are going to experience an overwhelming power. And you're going to even feel heavy, almost like you're being pushed over. What I want you to do is I don't want you to fight it, but I don't want you to just fall down for the sake of falling down, okay? But if you feel like you're going to do that, there's someone behind you and they'll catch you, you're fine. But I'm going to pray that the fire of God is going to come down on you in such a powerful way that your life will never be the same. And it's not because you fell on the ground. It's because your heart is being yielded to the Father. Your heart is being yielded to the Father because He wants to reveal His love to your world, which is His world through your life. And I know some of you are too young to understand everything I'm saying, but that's okay. You're going to receive it and you're going to be changed forever. You're going to be changed forever. The fire of God filler. Filler. Oh. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Release your peace. Release your peace. More, Lord. Love of God, come. Perfect love, come. From the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, come now. Fill her up. Fire of God, come. Fire, come. Fire, come. Fill her. Fill him in Jesus' name. Fill him. Just when, as soon as I touched him, I, I heard the old song, Purify my heart. You have a pure heart. Fill him. Fill him. Jesus. Jesus' name. Fill him. Fill him. I declare today that the, that the meditations of your heart and the words of your mouth are going to reveal the kingdom that you have a voice and your voice is going to be heard. You have things to be said and they're going to be heard. What the the enemy tried to use to, to come against you, the Lord is going to make it your greatest strength. Where the serpent bit you is going to be your greatest victory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fill him. Fire of God, come. Fire of God, come. Fire of God, come. Fill her, Lord. Top of her head, the bottom of her feet. Fill her with your love. Fire, come. Fire of God, come. Fill her. Fill her, Lord. Fill her. More, Lord. More, Lord. There it is. There it is. Fill her, Lord. Fill her, Lord. Fill her, Lord. 